406.12 tamper resistant receptacles. The locations requiring tamper resistant receptacles were increased. All right, so 406.12, all 15 and 20 amp, 125 and 250 volt non locking receptacles in the areas that we're about to talk about must be listed as tamper resistant. And here is my TR on the yoke. Here's my mark from UL showing that it's listed. Of course, it doesn't have to be UL. It could be Intertech or Met Labs or, or any other certified, you know, qualified testing laboratory. But UL, probably the most common, at least here in America. And again, there's my TR indicating that it's tamper resistant. Where do I need them? Well, item one, of course, is dwelling units. And this is where it all started. Uh, tamper resistant receptacles came into the code in 2008. And it was as the result of a 10-year study that was done by the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, or NEMA. And NEMA pulled data from 10 years worth of hospital emergency room visits that were due to electrical burn injuries. And what they found is there were over 26,000 children admitted to the emergency room in a 10-year span for sticking things in receptacles. Uh, 26,000 kids under the age of 8. So this all started out with dwelling units. Most of those, uh, or at least the majority, happened uh, at the home. So the home is where we first put these into the code. So dwelling unit area is included in 210.52 and 550.13 for mobile homes and manufactured homes. We also changed it here in 2020 to clarify that that does include the garage. It also includes accessory buildings, so detached garages, sheds, things of that nature. And now it also includes common areas of multifamily dwellings. Most of that is probably a clarification. Uh, garages and accessory buildings were already covered in 210.52 G1, so that, uh, that's probably already the case. But common areas of multifamily dwellings, you could argue, was not required before, and it definitely is now. Let's keep going. Item 2 is for hotels and motels. We had the guest rooms and guest suites of hotels and motels, which we added, I believe, in 2011. It could have been 2014. But we added guest rooms and guest suites since it's very common to uh, take the family on, a, on an adventure. You drop the kids off at the hotel, mom and dad go down for dinner, and the kids are sticking their knives in the outlets and everything else, blowing themselves up. So tamper-resistant receptacles in the guest rooms and guest suites. That's been expanded to the common areas of hotels and motels as well. So probably everywhere in this photograph. This was uh, this was at a uh, a ski resort in Pennsylvania where I was teaching a few months ago, and uh, yeah, everything that you can see there would have to be tamper resistant because that's all a common area. Item four was also changed. This used to say preschools and elementary schools. And one of the problems with that is what's an elementary school? There, there's not a clear definition of that term. Is that a K through six? That's what it was for me growing up. Uh, some el elementary schools go from K to five. If, you, uh, if you're in a small town like where my mom grew up, it was, it was one building that was K through 12. Yeah, in fact, I think hers was like two rooms <laughs> you know, that were K through 12. So what's an elementary school? I, I don't know. Now it just says preschools and education facilities. So this photograph here is, is at a college campus. This is, uh, this is a math class at my, at my daughter's school at the University of Utah, ranked number seven in college football right now, by the way. No big deal. So these would have to be tamper-resistant receptacles now. Pretty big change. That's, uh, that's pretty large in its scope. Item 6, really this was just a grammatical change. Assembly occupancy areas where people await transportation, as well as gymnasium, skating rinks, and auditorium. So where people wait for transportation. And I know when that first came out in 2017, that was a little bit hard to understand. What, what is an area where you wait for transportation? Uh, I was thinking like a, a taxi stand or a bus stop, and, and finally somebody pointed out the obvious to me, and that's an airport, and that's where you wait for transportation. So there you go. There's the airport. Got to have some tamper-resistant receptacles in there. Makes sense. You go through security and uh, drop your bag, your code book, and then go off to use the bathroom, and uh, the kids get their knives out, stick them in the outlets. You know, kids are clever these days. They can, they can get knives through security. Dormitory units. It used to say dormitories, now it says dormitory units because that's the way the term is defined in 2020. 
uh, I always try to use kind of an odd example. Usually when we think of dormitory units, we probably think of, of living facilities at a university or college. And certainly those are dorm dormitory units, but so would a fire station. And, and so is a facility like, so is a jail is a dormitory unit when you really look at the definition. Uh, this photograph here is at a facility uh, for I want to make sure that I'm that I'm treating this with the respect it deserves. It, it's a place where uh, where women that are in abusive relationships can uh, can go in in case of an emergency. You know, if uh, if they just need to to get out of town and and get somewhere to sleep. Uh, really nice facility that they made in Salt Lake, and uh, you know, it, it's group living. They don't have individual units with cooking and bathing and everything else. It, it's group living, and that is a dormitory unit. So it's not just uh, student housing when we think of dormitory units. It can be a whole host of different things. Fire stations, again, another example. And then the last one, we added assisted living facilities. And that makes sense. Uh, it, it's an unfortunate fact, but... You know, originally the idea was we're protecting children from sticking things in receptacles. And, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of times if you get to the point where you need to live at an assisted living facility, uh, mentally you might have regressed through Alzheimer's or, or uh, you know, any manner of different things. So you might be, you know, back to being a child more or less. So assisted living facilities now. Uh, these are classified as group I-1 in the International Building Code. So you can see you've got the uh, nurse call here and the guard, you know, the handrails, the grab bars, excuse me, uh, in the accessible roll-in type shower. So these facilities now require tamper-resistant receptacles. We still have the same exceptions, although in reality they're very seldom employed. Tamper-resistant receptacles are not required for receptacles that are more than five and a half feet above the floor. Makes sense. Again, if, if the issue is children, and I'm not sure that it is anymore, college students, you know, but if the issue is, is children, then perhaps they can't reach higher than five and a half feet above the floor. We also don't need tamper-resistant receptacles for receptacles that are part of a luminaire or appliance. So that's part of a luminaire that doesn't need to change uh, the way it's constructed. It doesn't need to have tamper-resistant receptacle in there. Item three, if the receptacle is singular, so a, a single receptacle, and is within the dedicated space of an appliance that's not easily moved from location to location. So what we're talking about here is a single receptacle, not a duplex, but a single receptacle behind a refrigerator or a freezer or a duplex receptacle that's behind both. Now, again, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but if you want to try to save the, the 25 cents and fight through and see if you meet the exception, be my guest. Uh, I'm not sure that it's ever worth it. The other one, item four, non-grounding receptacles. If you replace a two-wire receptacle with a new two-wire receptacle, that also does not need to be a tamper-resistant receptacle. These graphics came from my book, A Complete Guide to the 2020 NEC Changes. If you're interested in the book or if you're interested in the graphics, if you're an instructor and you need material, go to my website, ryanjacksonelectrical.com shop. Take a look there. My name's Ryan Jackson, Ryan Jackson Electrical Training, ryanjacksonelectrical.com. There's my contact information. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'd love to help you out. Take care.